Good Thursday afternoon, guys. Jerry Miller, welcome to the I Love Seville show. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville network. It's a good program we have lined up for you. Of course, we're going to talk about the reopening of schools from a, a local standpoint, elementary, middle, and high school. We're going to talk about the University of Virginia. We've had some changes already in some of the colleges in the Commonwealth, which we will update you on, including the University of Lynchburg, who is now going virtual um, after just less than a week of reopening. Same situation we're seeing at Notre Dame and Chapel Hill. So we'll update you on some of the, the school aspects in the Commonwealth, the, the plan for student health here in Charlottesville at the University of Virginia. Radford University, folks, has suspended multiple students for hosting parties. You heard me correctly, hosting parties, including one student at Radford University who's been suspended for the entire year. Imagine telling your mom and dad, I went to school for five days I hosted a keg party at my house, and now I can't go back to school for two semesters. How will that conversation go with mom and dad? Uh, Johnson & Johnson has a late-stage COVID vaccine trial starting with 60,000 people. We'll give you that update. I think it's positive. It's making the markets move a little bit today. 60,000 people in a late-stage COVID vaccine trial in September through Johnson & Johnson. And folks, more cuts from American Airlines. Now 15 cities in the United States are, are having their service and their routes cut by American um, Airlines, including Henderson, North, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Hendersonville, North Carolina is a place that's near and dear to my heart, just a fabulous little town about five hours from here. You know, we'll analyze the impacts of these cuts. We'll ask the question if we can see cuts or expect cuts in Charlottesville and or around Richmond and just kind of take it from a macro look down to the micro level here in Charlottesville. I'm really excited to welcome Courtney Tyler to today's show. She, uh, a co-owner of Tonic, the, the newest restaurant to open in the city of Charlottesville and in Central Virginia on Market Street in the old Tin Whistle location. Courtney and, and, and Derek do a hell of a job. She's going to join us in about 20 minutes on today's show just to spotlight what it's like to open a restaurant in a, a, a COVID-19 landscape. I mean, I mean, Tillman's is the real deal. I've said multiple times on this program, maybe the best grilled cheese at Tillman's, just an approachable bar at the back end of this fabulous little, little like wine bar, retail shop, just a great spot. I'm curious to how they can continue and carry that success from Tillman's into Tonic. I love the menu and concept over there on Market Street. Judah Wickhauer is our fabulous director. I'd like to give some attention to a fabulous fabulous local company and interstate pest and service companies. This is a four generation family business that cares about their team members and their customers. You see the red trucks everywhere around town. Interstate pest and service companies is a home's best friend. And how about Ting, Judah Wickhauer? You can save $288 on fiber internet. This is the fastest internet in Charlottesville at the lowest price they offer. And you have to do it through this link, iloveseville.ting.com, 288 bucks of savings, free first month and in free installation. All right, Judah, let's go to the first headline, um, Orange County. Uh, now, let's start with Louisa. Why don't we start with Louisa, um, Judah? COVID in Louisa County schools. We're going to see more of this. So some of the rural schools in central Virginia, Greene County, Louisa County, Orange County. They're opening in this hybrid format where students are coming inside into the classroom. Well, Louisa County has had one student and one staff member already test positive for COVID, and the system has not even been, the school system hasn't even been open for a week. So it's got some folks concerned. I think we can certainly expect this poorly ventilated schools, folks in close proximity to each other. Now, here's an interesting wrinkle, and it's important to emphasize this for, for parents, for moms. The student in the Louisa County school system and the staff member in the Louisa County school system did not get COVID while in their respective schools. They got it outside the school and a different type of experience. 
Now, the school system notified the students around the staff members and the parents um, about the cases, and, and life goes on. Life moves on. We have Orange County with our next headline, Judah, set to reopen very soon. Um, Orange County schools are going to be doing also this hybrid model where students are coming in person. The Seville Weekly and its new editor, Ben Hitchcock, did a really good article that you can find online on Seville, um, c-ville.com. And the article just basically spotlights how teachers feel. Now, he had to do it from an anonymity um, standpoint because the teachers feared losing their job talking to the media. But the teacher straight up said to the reporter, morale is at an all-time low. Teachers are quitting left and right. Here's, this is what they're asking of the teachers. I'm going to throw this out there. So at Orange County Schools in this hybrid model, you have to wear the mask in the hallways. But when you get to your classroom and you sit at your desk, the students can take their mask off. And that's making teachers feel very vulnerable and fearful. How about this? The teachers at Orange County Public Schools are literally, when the students come into the classroom, the teachers have to do a face-to-face -face temperature check of the students. So teachers not only being asked to mold the minds of the next generation and help them blossom and learn, teachers not, all, not only you know, asked to be in some ways the parental supervision and, 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 and the adult supervision and the role model for so many students, but now teachers being asked in Orange County Public Schools to go up to each student and do a daily temperature check. So more on the plate of teachers than ever before, right? And, and, and frankly, if you're a teacher and you're going up to a student and you're doing a temperature check, you must feel a little bit of vulnerability being that close. So we'll follow as, as schools reopen. Green, orange, and Louisa, this hybrid model of kids coming into the, the hallways, this is going to be a good pop. And a pop is a, a, a proof of performance, you know, tangible data that we can see. We're seeing a lot of tangible data at the college level, certainly with Radford University. You get that headline on screen for us, Judah Wickhauer. And guys, give the show a like and a share now if you like the product. Hit the like button and share the show. Do us that favor. How about this story out of Radford? I mean, Radford University, and tell me how this is going to work, okay? Kid, kid goes back to school. At Radford U. And at Radford U, um, a couple of kids, you know, it's the first week of classes, first week of classes in college, not much is happening. You're buying your textbooks, you know, you're getting a feel. You're getting a feel for what the semester's gonna be. So Bobby Joe and uh, Sue and, and, and Sally Jones and, uh, and Stevie Ray Vaughn and, 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 and Steve Curly Q decide to host a party at Radford. Why would you host a party? 18 to 22. Of course, there's COVID. So these guys, they host a party at Radford University. Next thing you know, a night of doing keg stands, a night of uh, bonging beers, a night of, you know, trying to get lucky, turns into suspensions for a handful of students, including one student at Radford University that was suspended for the entire year. You heard me correctly. Now, let me give you a little bit of background. The student that was suspended for the entire year hosted a kegger on back-to-back -back nights. So on one night, they've only been in school for less than a week. So on one night, he had a kegger. Word got back to teachers. Word got back to, you know, the snitches who get stitches. Word got back to faculty. And after one night of having the kegger at Radford U, he literally had administration reach out to him and said, you do this again, you're going to get popped. You're going to get in trouble. Now, I probably would have been an 18 to 22-year-old Jerry. I mean, you know me how I am now. Can imagine me at 18 to 22, freaking all over the place. Like to get after it, still like to get after it. Um, 18 to 22-year-old Jerry, loved pretty girls, loved pretty girls, and liked to have a good time. So I probably would have been this guy that hosted the party. Now, after being warned 
Um, about hosting parties, I, I, I hope I would have had at 18 to 22 the, foresight, the foresight and maturity not to have a party on the next night, I hope. Um, but this dude has been canned, kicked to the curb, hasta luego, hit the road jack from Radford U. Can you imagine going to mom and dad? Mom and dad just moved you into college. They've been in school for less than a week. At Radford. Mom and dad just moved you into college less than a week ago, and you get the phone call from, from, from Stevie Ray Vaughn or from Sally Jones, and Stevie Ray Vaughn and Sally Jones say, Mom, Dad, y- you got to come pick me up again. What are you talking about? I just dropped you off. I finally got some peace. You're out of the house. We're not fighting. The wife and I can go to happy hour. We don't have to watch your ass here in the house all the time. Mom, Dad, you have to come pick us up. I got kicked out of school. I got suspended for two, two semesters. You got suspended for two semesters for what? For hosting a keg party on back-to-back nights. Uh, can you imagine that conversation that you have with mom or dad? I mean, that's not going to go well. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is what I want to follow. Will these suspensions lead to legal action from parents against schools? If you're the mom or dad, do you just say, little Stevie Ray Vaughan is a dum-dum, and he just got suspended for two semesters because he threw a party? Or if you're the mom or dad and say, little Stevie Ray Vaughan just did what every 18 to 22-year-old does in America when they go to college. I'm bringing my lawyer in the mix, and I'm going toe-to-toe with the school. That's what I'm going to follow. That's, that's what I'm going to follow. Now, let's sidestep one more time. I promised you um, a health update from the University of Virginia. Judah, if you can get on screen the headline from virginia.edu. This is the student health plan for for UVA. So basically in Charlottesville, and remember, we're less than a week away from schools opening virtually, and we're less than three weeks away from students coming back for in-person in Charlottesville. A lot of students are already back but less than three weeks away from the actual in-person thing happening. Student Health said, this is the plan of attack through virginia.edu, which I check out often. If you get COVID, if you get COVID and you're on grounds living in student housing and you test positive at UVA, you will go into isolation for a period of 10 days. Isolation, they're going to have you quarantine in a special off Um, dormitory or sleeping arrangements. You will learn virtually. You will see nobody. Your food will be delivered outside your door. It's basically an improved version of, I guess, jail. I mean, you're you're not trapped against your will. You didn't commit a crime, but you're going to be in a bedroom for an extended period of time. Your food's going to be left outside your door 10 days if you get COVID at the University of Virginia. Now, Students who are living on grounds and have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, so you're exposed, not test positive, but exposed, you will enter into quarantine housing for 14 days. So if you're exposed to COVID, student health at University of Virginia said you will quarantine for 14 days in student housing. If you get the test and you test positive, it's 10. So that's an update. Came out today. Um, from from Student Health at the University of Virginia. We'll follow those updates closely and deliver them to you as we get more information. I like the plan of attack. I think it's very important that we manage expectations. When we manage expectations, then we don't get as disappointed when we know certain things are going to happen. Guys, here's the manage expectations conversation. We will have COVID cases with students at the University of Virginia. We all realize that, right? We all realize that. We will have COVID cases, more of them, with schools around Central Virginia, elementary, middle, and uh, and high school. We all realize that, right? So let's manage our expectations that that is going to happen so we're not appalled, taken aback, feeling even more vulnerable or fearful than we are already. All right, the next headline is, again, Lynchburg University. And then I promise you I have something that's going to blow your mind 
a video of a fabulous corn maze at Woodridge Farm Brewery in Nelson County. One of the best kept secrets in Central Virginia is Woodridge Farm Brewery, and I'll tell you why. And then I'm going to show you a beautiful video, uh, of uh, an aerial video from a drone of what this talented business owner has done with his land. So that's coming up. Before I do, one other story that we need to follow, just down the road in Lynchburg University, um, dot the I's and cross the T's on this, five active cases at Lynchburg U forced the school to move classes online one week after returning for in-person classes. Now, a little bit different than Chapel Hill, UNC, and Notre Dame, and Michigan State. Lynchburg U is a small, Lynchburg University is a smaller school. So Lynchburg, because of its smaller student body population, is going to try to only do virtual for one week because of these tests, these cases. And then after one week of virtual, they will reassess if they choose to go in person again. But Lynchburg University just started in-person classes about six days ago, already five active cases that encouraged or forced, depending on how you look at it, the administration to move classes online one week after starting. They're only going to have classes online for one week only and reassess in seven days. All right, Judah, I want you to get that video. We need, we need an escape. Let's take an escape for 60 seconds. How long is that video, J-Dubs? Is it about 60 seconds? It's over a minute, but I think uh, half of it is after the first half, it goes away from the field. Okay, all right. So, it's a, so we'll play the field only, and then you can count me back in. So we, let's take an escape from COVID for a second here on the I Love Seville show. And give the show a like and a share on any of the Facebook pages you're watching. Courtney Tyler is going to join us in a matter of moments. She's the fabulous restaurateur, co-owner of Tillman's, co-owner of the newest restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's on Market Street in the old Tin Whistle Irish Pub. It's called Tonic. Um, that particular location has one of the best outside seating situations in the city of Charlottesville. More on that in a second. Before we go any further, I want to take a, a, a relief. Inhale. <sighs> Exhale with me. Everybody do it. If you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, listening on Spotify, listening on iTunes, listening on Apple Podcasts, do it with me. Okay, inhale, exhale. Now let's get an escape from COVID and let's think about this beautiful area we live, base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. We have breweries everywhere, vineyards and wineries everywhere, phenomenal restaurants everywhere. We have renaissance cosmopolitan people in our community. We have people that are kind and considerate, people that say hello to you when you walk down the street, open the door for you, right? It's a special place. One of the special places that I particularly enjoy going with my family is Woodridge Farm Brewery. Patty Zeller of Animal Connection turned us on to this particular brewery. She and Conrad, Patty and Conrad go there all the time. That's her man. So at this particular brewery, you can get a bucket of peanuts. They don't charge you for the peanuts. You eat the peanuts. You throw the shells on the ground. I love doing that. They have porch decks that wrap around the brewery. They have ample land and space. They have food on site. And the beer's pretty darn good, too. The beer's pretty darn good, too. It's about 35 minutes from Charlottesville. It's in Nelson County, right on the Nelson County, right past the Nelson County line. Well, the owner of Woodridge Farm Brewery is a very unique individual. In fact, when you see him walking around the brewery, you often see him, every time I've seen him, he has no shoes on. He travels around the brewery, walks around the brewery, trapes around the brewery, barefooted. He's a very, very uh, unique individual. Look at what he did, and I'll count you down to play it, Judah. Guys, watch it on Facebook. If you're, if you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, pod, um, you know, uh, uh, Spotify, iTunes, or Apple Podcasts, you're not getting the visual. Everyone that's watching, look at the screen here in a matter of seconds. Look at what this guy did to Woodridge Farm Brewery. Judah, play that video on screen. Play 30 seconds of it if you could. Three, two, there's no audio on it, is there, Judah? Oh, I'm, I'm glad you've played it and prepped for the show. All right, play the, uh, play the video. Is it playing now? It is now. Okay, guys, look at the screen. 
Look at the screen. I mean, it's, Patty, show me this video. I love it. It's, it's, it's such a good use. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right? Have you been here? Have you guys been to Woodridge Farm Brewery? You should try it. I, I recommend it. I was having this conversation with Patty. We were almost hesitant um, to put Woodridge Farm Brewery on blast. And on blast, I mean, give it the spotlight. Yeah, come back to me. Give it the spotlight because it's such a place that we can go and like with our families and just chill. I mean, look at this place. 40, 30, 35 minutes from Charlottesville. I mean, it's just gorgeous. That's a little bit of an escape from COVID right there for you. A um, couple other items out of the notebook before we get to Courtney Tyler. Courtney Tyler of Tillman's and of Tonic. So this is a positive. I think this is a positive, right, Judah? Johnson & Johnson has an early stage um, trial for COVID vaccine. That's on screen. Thank you, Judah. Um, early stage trial, 60,000 people in September. We'll do a, a, a late stage, excuse me, late stage, late stage Vaccine trial in September with 60,000 people from Johnson & Johnson. They begin what would be the largest late-stage trial testing a potential vaccine um, has had so far. The phase three trial would enroll 60,000 healthy people 18 um, years and older across nearly 180 locations in the U.S. and other countries. Like it. Positive. Try to bring you positive. I try to bring you positive. Positive news. Late-stage trial vaccine. We want it as much as anybody. That's positive. And before we get to Courtney, one more item out of the notebook that I thought was relevant to you guys. American Airlines is cutting service to 15 cities in the United States. Let me give you those 15 cities. Thank you, Judah. Those 15 cities so far are Del Rio, Texas. Is it Dubuque, Iowa? Am I saying that right? What is it? Dubuque. Okay, thank you. How do you know that? I just know it. Dubuque? Okay, so thank you. Del Rio, Texas, Dubuque, Iowa, Florence, South Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina, which I love Greenville, Huntington, West Virginia, Joplin, Missouri, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Lake Charles, Louisiana, New Haven, Connecticut, American Airlines cutting service to New Haven, Connecticut, New Windsor, New York, Roswell, New, uh, New Mexico, Sioux City, Iowa, Springfield, Illinois, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and Williamsport, Pennsylvania. American and some of the other airlines have straight up said more cuts of routes and service are coming unless we get a bailout from Congress. So you see the airlines now using routes and service as leverage to try to get billions of bailout money from Congress. Congress seems amenable to giving a second stimulus package to the airlines, but they haven't agreed upon a deal yet. They have not bridged the aisle. In fact, Nancy Pelosi in Congress right now on recess, Pelosi sipping umbrella drinks, cocktail drinks in a two-piece bikini working on her tan while Mitch McConnell is drinking Minuteman IPAs and, 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 and checking some people out on the pool deck. Okay, so it's not a good situation. So the airlines are straight up saying, we are cutting routes to the cities where your constituents live in. And your constituents are going to blow your phone up saying, what the H-E double hockey sticks are these routes being cut for? And then that is leverage or encourages Congress to potentially do a second bailout. I'm concerned as someone that lives in a small town and someone that does have to do traveling for work, if other cuts are coming specifically to Virginia and maybe Charlottesville. We don't know yet, but I can say that the Charlottesville airport, I would not not say is a thriving, busy metropolis of an airport compared to some one of the bigger ones. Wouldn't you agree? And they're doing the cuts at the smaller airports where traffic is lower. So the last thing we need is cuts with travel and making it more difficult and more expensive to get places. So follow that story, especially as it pertains to Charlottesville. You can save 288 bucks on TIG Fiber. Juna, get that on screen for us. Um, 288 bucks is the lowest price for fiber internet out there. Give the show a like and a share. Um, give us a, a heart here on Instagram. J-Dubs, why don't I go out to, to Courtney? Courtney, if you're watching, I'm Skyping you now. She is the co-owner of Tillman's with Derek Mansfield, and they are opening a new restaurant 
called Tonic on Market Street. J-Dubs, I have Courtney on the line. The lighting looks great. She looks fantastic. I'm getting the thumbs up to welcome her on the show. Courtney, thank you for joining us. Um, you're opening a, a second restaurant. You're a superhero. You and Derek wear red capes. You're doing this in COVID as well. The first question I'm going to ask you is this one. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready. How are you feeling? How is the mental health right now? It's great. Um, you know, we've had lots of people stop by on their walks and that we know from Tillman's and really welcome us and they're all excited. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got a full house tonight um, on our uh, chef's tasting event and there might be a few spots left um, tomorrow. So uh, we're all systems go. That's awesome. So here's the news. Tonic on Market Street in the old Tin Whistle. They redid, and I'm curious of what you did. It looks like you did massive renovations over there. You improved an outside that was like already bona fide, and you made it even better. I mean, Tonic legitimately has one of the best outsides in the city of Charlottesville. So give us an update on the restaurant, all the work you did, the timeline it took, and everything that transpired. Yeah, I mean, well... To be honest, we signed the lease here before COVID hit, um, and then, you know, of course, want one. Here we go. Um, but we really decided to go forward. Um, you know, we opened Tillman's, uh, I guess, in May, back up, and I really felt like the only way to close permanently is to stay closed. So we decided to open till it went well, and it's still going well. So it really gave us the confidence to uh, work on Tonic. Uh, so, like you mentioned, Tonic has got a great outdoor patio. It's giant, thankfully. Um, it's a covered patio, so you can enjoy it, rain or shine. So we can get uh, about 35 people out there, which is nice. That's spaced. Um, so we've spaced everything so everybody can be nice and safe. Um, so we feel really confident about that. And then, like you mentioned, we did... Um, Extensive renovations on the inside as well. We really made it light and bright. Um, we're in the historic Mickey building, which is fantastic. Um, so there's these beautiful windows that were put in this building probably around the uh, 20s and are gorgeous. So we've got a really light filled space, um, beautiful space. And then I'm really excited about the food that we're going to be offering. Um, we're doing small plates and sandwiches, open face sandwiches. Very um, veggie forward, um, very influenced by coastal South Carolina, where I'm from, and Scandinavia. So very simple, local food. We use what we have close to us here. Um, Emerson Ross is with us, joined us um, as our new chef. He's fantastic. So we're thrilled about our food. Um, and then we're also doing, I think we're the only people, I might be wrong, but we're the we're going to have a 100% organic and biodynamic and natural wine list. Nice. And our cocktails, I know, our cocktails are all botanically inspired and they're fabulous. And Holly Brooks and Carrie Ann Hamer really put those together for us. So just really super excited to welcome Charlotte's Phil to Tonic. I love it. I love it. I love that space. I love the outside and the importance of outside never more uh, important than now, that's for certain. You mentioned Tillman's with reopening gave you confidence to get the ball rolling with Tonic. What is that, what did you mean by that? Well, you know, uh, Derek and I were really, um, we're very committed to our staff. We always have been. Um, so we, of course, wanted to make sure we felt confident that they would be safe when we opened. So we really did watch the Thomas Jefferson Health Department um, statistics. And we really felt like Charlottesville had done a great job in terms of keeping cases low. So that gave us, I say, the base of confidence to open up. And, you know, I think that people see a lot of negative stories in the news about people not wearing masks and, you know, being very confrontational. And we just did not have that experience at all with our clientele and our guests at, at Tillman's. Everybody was gracious. You know, everybody's wearing masks. People understand and are patient when we are seating people. You know, they wait for us to sanitize tables. Um, you know, the downtown mall, I think you know, you're on the mall has been pretty slow to come back. Um, you know, I think part of that is good in terms of we want to be cautious, we want to be safe. Um, 
but obviously we still want to be open and have this thriving heart of Charlottesville that we all love. So we did feel confident. We felt like our guests were really fantastic. Um, our staff was great. You know, we really did a measured approach. We, we started opening just on the weekends and then we would add days as we felt confident. Um, and so we, we did feel confident that we had the clientele to open um, and we feel confident in the citizens of Charlottesville to do the right thing. So I think that's where we are on, on that confidence level. Nice answer right there. How about, um, how about a take or some perspective on the downtown mall? Um, like you, I'm on the mall, I mean, almost every day. I mean, we yeah. bleed the downtown mall. I mean, our future is literally tied, both of ours, to the downtown mall. Yes. We are passionate about the mall. Anywhere you want to go on the mall. I mean, I, 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 I liked your take where you said, with it not being crowded, it's allowing the mall to reopen and transition and figure things out as opposed to being, being shoulder to shoulder. But at the same time, we both know that 15 or 20 percent capacity level is not going to lead to these businesses staying in business on the mall. No, I mean, I, I do think that, you know, right now it, it feels a little bit uh, like every man for themselves on the mall. Um, so you see a lot of different reactions to it. And I think people are trying to figure out what's, what works best for their business. And we really have to respect that, you know, people have different size uh, shops, People have different types of businesses. You know, we've got restaurants, we've got retail. Um, you know, I, I wish every single business owner on the downtown mall the absolute best. Um, Bizu just opened up recently for their patio. <laughs> My husband and I were the first people to sit down. I was really happy about it. Um, so yeah, I'm always thrilled when I see my old favorites doing well and, and really um, out there trying, right? You gotta try. That's my thing, you gotta try. And it's always, for me, soul crushing when I see people that don't make it. Um, but it really, everybody has got to, to do what's best and what they think is best for their business. So my advice for everybody is support local when you can. Um, I also really firmly believe the small businesses are going, to be, are going to be the ones that come out ahead because we're scrappy. And, you know, we're going to get it done. So I know a, a lot of business owners are sometimes doing a little bit more delivery or they're changing their hours uh, brasserie they opened that great little superette right so more power to them you know get out there and be scrappy and i think for all of us as citizens of charlottesville we really need to commit to making sure that our dollars stay in our town um you know do do your support of local at your comfort level is what i tell everybody if you're comfortable um, you know, sitting on an outdoor patio like we have or an outdoor patio on the mall, do it. Um, if you're comfortable taking, getting takeout, go for it. Um, if you're comfortable sitting inside a restaurant, great. I, did, I went to Citizen Burger last night and had a burger on the mall. So every time I want to go out, I'm, I want to make sure that I support my fellow business people here on the mall. So. I love it. Courtney, you're killing this interview. You are a natural <laughs> at interviewing. Um, you're making this easy. All right, let me throw this question to you. What can we expect when we go to Tonic? Let's say we go to Tonic, uh, I'm going on a date or with friends and family. What can we expect? Great food, um, you know, small plates, seafood, veggie forward, um, hospitable people. We've got an Fabulous, fabulous team put together. I would say you'll recognize some faces from Tillman's. Uh, I think five of us came over from Tillman's, so you'll see some friendly faces there. Um, a gorgeous patio uh, that you can enjoy. We also have an outdoor bar uh, that's fully functional. Nice. We've got coolers. Um, it's going to be great when you can sit at the bar, but right now we're at tables. So I think you're just going to have um, a nice oasis inside the city where you can relax in a really nice outdoor patio, enjoy great food, great organic wine, and fantastic cocktails. So. Awesome. The outside, guys, is like super legit. And I walk by this place almost every day because they're like, I don't know, 200 feet from our network here. It is legit. Um, did you, how are you and Derek going to split your time? You got two brands, now. you have two restaurants now. <laughs> 
We're busy. We're busy people. Uh, yeah, I know. My husband said that to me yesterday. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. But, you know, I think that COVID really made us both realize that we like to be busy. Um, this isn't the last you'll see of us. Come on, we've got other plans, right? No way. So hold on one second. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Are you, are you saying you're going to do a third restaurant? Is that what you're saying? I'm not going to say like tomorrow, but we're, we've always we've always wanted to think big. Wow. So, so yeah. you have in the works right now a third restaurant concept? No, I would say only the nugget of an idea. Wow. But we always like to, to go there. But, you know, Derek is much more the, um, I guess he's the finance guy. Um, he's also used a lot. Of, I'm not usually the face of Tillman's, I don't think. I tend to be the food and the creative one. We're a great partnership. Um, our personalities really meld well, so we just do two of them. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so we couldn't do it though without our team. I think that's probably the most important thing. Um, that I say it all the time. You know, hire people that are smart and get out of their way. You know, and we really, really couldn't do it without our teams at Tillman and Tonic. So those people are fabulous. You seem so like chill and relaxed and like <laughs> laid back. For a, a lady that is literally having a soft opening tonight. It's all in the planning. Make a good plan. Make a good list. Execute. Make sure you're on time. So, all right. I'll get you out of here on this note. Did you think, and I think you just gave us the answer, did you think that you would be a businesswoman and the co-owner of two restaurants in Charlottesville, Virginia? Absolutely not. I mean, I will say I came here to work with Relay Foods. And you guys remember Relay Foods? Uh, Derek was the president of that company, and I was the VP of merchandising. Um, but I did fall in love with the downtown mall, and the very first day that I was here, I said, I want to be a part of this. I love Charlottesville. It's in my adopted town. They have been very welcoming, so I never thought that I would be doing it, but I am thrilled to be doing it, and it makes me really, really happy to do it. So You hit a grand slam with this interview. I mean, seriously, um, we wish you. you the best of luck with everything. Um, thank you. Thank you for waving the, the flag for downtown Charlottesville. Thank you for Always. opening Tillman's. I mean, you and, and Andy at Citizen Burger Bar. I mean, you guys were mm -hmm. leaders doing this. Uh, so thank you for that. And you and Derek, the best of luck with Tonic. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you. you. I'll see you Take soon. Take care. See you around. All right. You have a good All one. Right. Um, Courtney Tyler, boys and girls, she is absolutely fabulous, the co-owner of now Tillman's and Tonic. The place Tonic, guys, is legit. I mean, I, I have not been in as a customer, but I have walked by so many times on the way to the Macklin building on Market Street, and the outside, the, I, I, I thought, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree with this, I thought the Tin Whistle Irish Pub already had a super legit and cool outside. And Derek and Courtney and the Tonic and Tillman's team have made that outside even better. I mean, it is dope. I walk by and, and it's like covered from the sun. She just straight up said you can be there during inclement weather. I mean, it is super legit. And I think that outside space, seating 35, I mean, that's going to be an asset right there um, to that team. Give the show a like and a share on any of the Facebook pages. Instagram, we will get to you. Twitter, we will get to you. LinkedIn and um, YouTube, we will get to you as well. Of course, we're going to archive today's show on ilovesevil.com. We will take today's show and we'll put it in our daily e-newsletter. If, you, if you're not getting the I Love Seville newsletter, please do. I think we have 137,000, 137,000 people signed up for that distro list. We also take the audio of the show and we archive it each day on Spotify, on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, and then, of course, post the content across LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. Judah Wickhauer is our director. I got to give him props before I wrap up the program. I will get to your comments, too, um, in the stream. If you have any, put those in the comment section, and we will get to those. Um, Judah, thank you. You do a heck of a job on the show. Um, I'm certainly very grateful for you. Um, let them know how they can save 288 bucks through Ting Fiber Internet, please. I love Seville.ting.com. Get that on screen. Thank you very much. If you guys have not noticed, we've launched um, a new show, 
and it's called the I Love Seville Daily Digest. It airs on five, at 5 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And the I Love Seville Daily Digest is five minutes or less of content. The happenings, the comings and goings, the news that you need to know about in Charlottesville. We, we, we just do it really tightly, really deliver it to you, like ear candy for, you, for your soul if you love Charlottesville like we do. We'll give you five minutes. It's going to be probably like 15 different happenings or stories, five o'clock, Monday through Friday, on the I Love Seville Network. It's the I Love Seville Daily Digest. We'll get to some comments. Tracy Lee Sh uh, Shiflet. Welcome to the broadcast, Tracy Lee Shiflet. She says, support small local businesses. I cannot wait to try your new restaurant, Tonic Courtney. I love wine. That's from Tracy Lee Shiflet. Tracy, I very much encourage you to try Tonic is bona fide, and it will be bona fide, because it's the people behind Tillman's, and Tillman's is legit. Carly Tiegler, welcome to the broadcast. She says, woohoo, Courtney and Derek are incredible. Carly says, I'm so excited for Tonic's opening, and that's from Carly. Carly, thank you for watching um, the broadcast. We certainly appreciate that. All right, let's go to Tim. Tim Ryan's watching the broadcast, and he says, I did not know about this restaurant. We will be sure to support Courtney and Derek, we love them at Tillman's. We will go to Tonic and sit outside and have some wine this weekend. I believe, guys, um, and, and someone put in the feed here. In fact, I may know this. They're, they're doing a soft opening now. So, so call ahead or stop by if you're in the area. But I believe the soft opening is today. That way you can get the official hours, Tim, when you go and visit um, I think it's going to be a great spot. Um, give it a like, give it a share, give it a like, give it a share. I'm going to close with Miller's Minute today. Judah, if we want to give some love to Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Dr. Wagner changing people's lives through sports medicine, physical therapy, and chiropractic care. So we'll close the program by uh, reminding everyone in Charlottesville that we are doing a good job of managing this pandemic. Look at the numbers from the Thomas Jefferson Health District and anyone that is impacted by COVID, we should take seriously and we should obviously, obviously be considerate of everyone. But if you look at the numbers, we're managing this well. If you look at the numbers, we're managing this well. You hear from someone like Courtney, who's the owner of Tillman's, co-owner of Tillman's, she outlines how her staff is so committed to safety and to health and to her customers. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it from Citizen Burger Bar, and I've seen it from a number of restaurants. I've seen it from Keswick Vineyards. I've seen it from Animal Connection. There's a number of businesses, a number of local merchants, a number of SMBs, small and medium-sized businesses, that are literally doing everything in their power, like Daniel Kaufman at Public, everything in their power to make your experience as safe and healthy as possible. I think we can return the favor. We can do it safely. We can do it with our mask on. We can do it in a social distance capacity. But we should support these businesses that are doing everything in their power to keep things safe for us. Look at the data dashboard from the Thomas Jefferson Health District. I encourage you to check out the metrics. We're managing this well in Charlottesville. We're managing it well. And I know there's a tremendous amount of trepidation about UVA students returning and how that could impact um, Charlottesville. Guys, the students are already in town. The students are already here. The lease has started. It's August 20th. They started, they started on August 1, the leases. They've been in town for 20 days. We're managing it. All right, just a little perspective. We can do this. Support the, the folks that are going the extra mile for us. The Courtney Tylers and Derricks of the world. Thank you, Courtney, for joining us. Tonic is going to be a smash success. I absolutely know it. My name is Jerry Miller. This is the I Love Seville Show.